back to zero, and we are going to do it wrong. Oh god, this is going to sound so bad. I'm sorry. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. Today's a little bit of a different episode. It's the first of our technical series where we're gonna go over and share some of our tips and tricks and experience that's gonna hopefully help you when you're wrenching at home. Today's topic, brakes. Specifically brake rotors, what they do, and how you can save a bunch of money, probably a bunch of money, when you're doing your own brake job at home. I came next door to our friends at Durza Auto borrow some of their equipment and some of their old brake rotors so we can cover and get through this episode. Now, when you've seen us do brakes, both on the DeBarge channel and sometimes here on the Wrench Everyday channel, we most regularly just put on brand new brake rotors. That is a process that we do. We have our own reasons for it. Sometimes it's convenience. We need to get brakes done very quickly. I like to personally have a new unused rotor, just all the meat, never been turned, on my Titan because I tow very heavy loads with it. I've had a 44 foot gooseneck trailer behind it. So I want every, every ounce of brake rotor and brake material as possible, but that's not practical for everyone to always just put brand new brakes on it. So something you can do when you're having your brakes done is have the rotor turned. Now that's something that you've probably heard, don't know exactly what it is. So we're gonna cover what turning a rotor is, but first we're gonna go over exactly what the brake rotor is. And here we have a couple different types of brake rotors. We'll go over those in a second, but first... Hello. Hi. You forgot about Tavarish. Nobody forgot about me. You forgot about me. Oh, you no. went You went and went and did your thing and, yeah. in Atlanta, uh, and, and now I'm, yeah. I'm here all by myself. I need my Jared. <laughs> Everybody needs Jared. So what are, what are we doing today? Okay, we are going over brake rotors. I've already explained how we're kind of wasteful in that we throw them away and put new ones on all the time, and we have our own reasons. I said mostly it's time constraints like we don't have time to go and get them turned we right. haven't explained what turning is but i was going to ask you when you press the brake pedal and the brake pads squeeze on a brake rotor mm -hmm. what specifically is stopping you friction okay that is the scientifically correct act answer friction but what makes the friction uh the compound of the pad hitting the face of the rotor so it's essentially a uh, ceramic or sometimes metal compound going on the face of the steel brake rotor. Close. Magic pixies. <laughs> so what actually happens, and you've heard the term brake bedding, and there's, I'm not gonna say how to bed brakes because there are so many different ways. Look at your pad manufacturer and the bedding process. Normally it involves a couple high speed stops with cooling in between it. And what you're doing when you're bedding brakes is you're transferring pad material into the rotor face. And if I can get the glare, you can actually in this section see a small amount of sparkles. So close to Magic Pixie, that sparkle is the pad material. Okay. So your primary stopping force is the brake pad rubbing against bedded brake pad in your brake rotor. And then your brake rotor mm -hmm. becomes a very large heat sink because friction, mm -hmm. And when you're stopping and drawing the energy off of the vehicle moving kinetic energy, you turn it into heat energy. And that is where you have these cooling veins, mm -hmm. much larger, this is a truck rotor, that air is passed through to help cool the rotors, make it safe. And then you have, I mean, you have to worry about metal expansion because when metal gets hot, it expands. So these do a lot of important things. Yeah. Now this rotor is a rear rotor. You see it is a solid rotor. You also on smaller cars sometimes have a rotor similar to this on the front. This is unique in that it also has a tiny brake drum that's for your parking brake. Wait, some, some cars have this on the front? Yes. Aren't those called bicycles? Uh, they're also called Nissan Pulsars. So bicycles? Yes, pretty okay, much. Okay. When we talk about turning a brake rotor, you take a process that you machine and make the surface flat again and ready to accept a brake pad. The reason you could pad slap this, but if you look, there are very small ridges on the surface. So until your brake pad kind of wore into this pattern, you'd only have about 40% surface contact and 40% is not 100% and it's not 40% isn't 100%, but I have a question though. Yes. 
Um, since you obviously need as much braking power as possible, do you need to worry about how thick this is? Yes, there is a minimum thickness spec. So when a rotor comes, they're brand new, they'll measure 38 millimeters sometimes. And if you actually look on your brake rotor, sometimes they're too rusty. Like it would be on this face on this rotor, you're not gonna find that. Okay. But for demonstration purposes, that doesn't matter for us. But on this drum section of this brake rotor, which is confusing, here it is. Let's see if it'll show up on camera. If not, it says minimum thickness, eight millimeters. So we take our super expensive, high quality caliper here. Right. And we will measure 8.7 millimeters. That means we can have this rotor machined up to 0.7 millimeters and still be in specification. Well, there's 0.8. That's, uh, actually, that's actually a decent amount. Yeah, it's surprising how much you can get. Again, there's lots of reasons you would want to machine a rotor wear, uneven wear, so you have full potential contact potential. If you're changing your brake pad compound, because different brake pads, again, since the stopping force is brake pad against brake pad, mm -hmm. it's gotta be compatible. So that is another reason, or in the case of this poor rotor, this side doesn't look too bad, but they went a little too long. And what do you think caused that wear right there? Uh, panic. Panic, well, yes. that is that awful no. screeching, grinding. Yeah, you need to change your brake pads if that happens. Well, before that happens. That, that would have been metal to metal. The wear surface of the brake pad was no more and it became metal on metal grinding. So a, a big thing about this is instead of getting new rotors, you can actually get this done. Granted, if you have the minimum thickness requirements, uh, you can get it done for about like 10 bucks yeah, a rotor. It, it varies wildly. I've seen places that only charge $6 up to $20. You don't want those $6 yeah. places, okay? You, well, you, you're worth yeah. it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but let's say worst case, you spend $20. So you spend $40 to have two rotors turned a new set of average rotors on a car is probably seventy dollars. That's one hundred and forty dollars. You just saved a hundred dollars. Yes, but how else can yes. you get a hundred dollars that quickly? We need to can shut the camera off. I can tell you off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with just doing this stuff to rotors because right. usually the rotors that I deal with tend to be on the little more expensive side. So if I can save some money. I'll do it. Should we go get your uh, McLaren carbon ceramics and turn those? We should not, no. We should not. I'm, not, I'm gonna yeah. say no, no to that. So let's start the yeah. process. So our first step is we've got a brake lab over here and we are going to, I'm going to try to cut the rotor the worst way possible, the wrong way that if they come up to you and hand it to you and say, there you go, you say, no, thank you. And you can't use the rotor. You have our cutting teeth. We have a spindle, a brake rotor mounted, lots of precise measurement stuff that is not generally used for a $6 rotor cut, but we're gonna get this fired up. We're gonna cut and make some horrible noises that'll make me sad because it's wrong and I don't like doing it wrong. Okay, but... so I'm going to not be here because uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna, that looks dangerous. It's, it's not bad, just don't put your face in it. That's the sound of a warped rotor. So we're finding zero where we just make contact. And okay, so we go back to zero, and we are going to do it wrong. Oh my god, this is going to sound so bad. There we go. High speed. That's just cutting way too much. <laughs> hey, look, it's a brand new brake rotor. I'm disappointed. I tried to make it really bad and it didn't turn out very bad. All right. Neutral. 
and there we go. Oh no, she did it. She was bad. Wow. Okay. That's, uh... <laughs> so you see these little dancing lines out on the outside here. Mm -hmm. There she. She didn't sing to it. It's real good on the backside. It didn't sing to us like it was supposed to, but it at least gave us the pattern. So we'll set up. We need to turn to new bit tips, and then we are going to cut the same style rotor right, and we will compare them. Okay, so, I mean, just, just for argument's sake, why is this bad? So you see these harmonic lines. One, it's not a smooth surface. Like, run your finger on it. It's almost yeah. worse than it used to be. Yeah, it's like sandpaper. And the other other thing that it'll do is this has track marks in it. So when you press with the brake pad, it's actually going to try to follow these track marks like a record. Oh. And it's going to pop the brake pad. So as you apply, your brake pad is going to bounce up and down against your rattle shims, make popping noise. And again, it's not going to stop, stop well. So let's make a good, nice, pretty one. Okay, so here is what you want to look for when you actually do get these things turned. We're gonna do it the right way, right? Yes, we're gonna do it the right way. So we have fresh non-chipped edges on our cutting bits. We are gonna come in and make an initial contact and actually cut the rust lips off first. Then we'll come in and set and do a very small amount of metal on a fast cut. So we, once we know the rotor is true, because when you're cutting a rotor, you can see it's warped. If you suddenly have old metal, then freshly cut metal, obviously the surface isn't f flush. So we do a fast cut on a small amount. Once we know that's good, we reset, do a small cut on a very slow pull out. So basically it's just, you're adding more time. You Correct. just want to take your time to do this versus just doing it all in one pass and just yeah. rip the thing apart. Exactly. And normally there'll be an outside spring as well that can help with resonance. He doesn't have one that goes large enough, um, but we do also have this. So this will just sit here and ride on the surface of the rotor to keep the vibration of the rotor down because they'll go through and start singing. Again, we didn't really get the audible sing from the bad cut other than a small amount, but you can see it in the surface and the harmonics of the rotor. So this is there to dial that down to give us a nice smooth like new surface. So awesome. we will go through and do it the right way. Okay, and then when you mess up, uh, we're just gonna cut this right out of the video. Yep. Okay, so two passes. We did a regular pass and a finish pass and it looks pretty good. So comparison, that fast cut was what? Like 15 seconds real time-ish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been about eight minutes or so. That The slow cut is what takes all the time. And you can see, other than where we were touching it, it's actually come out to a very clean finish. There's still a small, what looks like record line, because the speed of the cut is so slow, you're not gonna run into the pad slapping. There's extra processes you can do, but really won't be needed on your street car. Now, if you're about to go on a racetrack, you can come back with an extra hone stone and make squiggly lines, but this is perfect to put back onto your car. So let us take, set this on the table next to the other one and uh, do a comparison of what to look for, of what you can expect as a good cut and not. So with them over the top of each other, you can see again how this is a very smooth finish. That's actually my fault. I wasn't holding the buffers as good as I could. But this is a pad or disc that was cut slow with good tips and time was taken with it. This is again a very fast rapid cut where the disc rotor developed its singing harmonics where you ended up with these really aggressive lines that will lead to pad chatter will lead to really initially a lot of pad wear because as Freddie called it, Tavares called it, it feels like sandpaper. It's a very, very coarse cut. So a lot of times the $6 places, that's probably what you're gonna get. I really like this because for about 10 to $15 uh, per rotor, you can have it looking like this, basically brand new from something like that. So I, I really, really like this mod, and I like that uh, you took the time to yeah. explain it to all of us. Yeah, I mean, brakes are very, very important. And again, not everyone is going to want to spend an extra 100 to $300 per brake job. So one thing you'll hear a lot too, if you have slotted or cross-drilled rotors, that they cannot be machined. They can be, most places don't like doing it because it generally will destroy a bit. Every time it is engaging and disengaging over a hole or the slot, that's very, very rough on the cutting bit tips. So it'll likely break them. If you find a place that will do it, they might charge you a little bit more, 
just to kind of cover the cost of the cutting consumables they're going to use up but at the same time if they charge you thirty dollars you're still going to save a lot of money so find a place nearby um, that is willing to do it for you and save a lot of money okay cool uh we, we huh? should we, sh yeah. we should go back into the ac yeah uh, we're spoiled it's been a week and we're already spoiled um, I'm gonna go back into the AC. All right, bye guys. Actually, you you say you say stuff, right? Yeah. You say, what, what do you what do you usually say? I always say. It's been a while since I've done this stuff. Yeah, I know. Well, I'll put you on the spot then. Okay. Always make questionable choices. And make sure your brakes are not garbage. <laughs>